Hello and welcome to TechyTube. In this video, we will discuss Zigbee technology, including some of its key characteristics, the different types of Zigbee networks and types of devices. Also, we will cover some basics of Zigbee communications. And of course, we will see some applications. Let's get into it. What is Zigbee technology? Zigbee is a wireless standard that defines a set of communication protocols for short-range communications. This is just half of the definition, and I will get into the complete one shortly. The question that anyone may ask is, why did we need a new standard for short-range communications? We already have Wi-Fi, and we also have Bluetooth. Well, Zigbee standard is specially built for control and sensor networks. The objective of this technology is to monitor and control devices. Both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are not quite suitable for this specific application of wireless communication. So what is Zigbee addressing in its standard? In a nutshell, Zigbee is a standard that addresses the need of very low cost implementation of low power devices with low data rate for short range communications. So this can be seen as the full definition of Zigbee standard. Zigbee is one of the most commonly used standards for Internet of Things. It is also an open source standard that was developed by Zigbee Alliance which is an organization created in 2002 and consists of hundreds of companies today. Okay, moving forward. What sort of applications can benefit from Zigbee technology? The most prominent applications are in home automation, medical data collection, and industrial control systems. The main purpose is to use wireless communication to gather information or perform certain control tasks inside a building. Remember, we mentioned that Zigbee was designed for control and sensor type networks. In Zigbee Home Automation, we basically have a home automation controller with a software application that controls smart devices. The controller is also called a central hub or simply a hub. The gateway is the interface between Zigbee network and the web. The gateway is connected to the internet and it will let the homeowner control his or her smart home devices from virtually anywhere in the world. Some of the smart home devices that Zigbee supports include lights, door locks, switches, smoke detectors, fans, appliances, and so many others. Let's take a look at a simple diagram of Zigbee network. This diagram shows you how different wall switches control different lights on the house. Notice that the wall switches are not connected with any electrical wire, and that's because they are battery operated. By switching on and off any of the switches, a message will be sent wirelessly to the controller, which will relay that message to the appropriate light bulb to either turn it on or turn it off. Another interesting application of Zigbee network is the remote monitoring system. Here, a patient can be wearing some Zigbee sensors that can collect information such as blood pressure, body temperature, heart rate, etc. This information will be sent through the Zigbee gateway over the internet to a personal computer in a hospital so that a physician or a nurse can monitor the patient's health. You might think why we can't use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth technology for these devices. Well, the issue is that Wi-Fi uses a lot of power, which is bad news for battery-powered devices or devices where low power consumption is important, such as sensors in this example here. Also, all devices here use low data rate, while Wi-Fi uses mainly high data rate. 
so it is an overkill to use Wi-Fi in this application. Bluetooth will also not be a good fit because Bluetooth network can only support a maximum of seven devices in a network, while Zigbee is designed to support hundreds of devices on a network. All right, time to take a look at some general characteristics of Zigbee standard. Low power consumption. Zigbee devices can typically operate for several years on a single battery. In many Zigbee applications, the device spends most of its time in a power saving mode, also known as sleep mode. We will show how devices can go to sleep mode later in this video. Low data rate. It varies between 20 kilobit per second up to a maximum of 250 kilobit per second. That's low. However, this is sufficient for the applications that Zigbee is intended for. Compare this rate to Wi-Fi rate, which is about 11 megabit per second. That's 50 times higher than Zigbee. With Wi-Fi, devices can stream video, audio, and pictures. For Bluetooth, the data rate can go up to 1 megabit per second. So no video streaming, but devices can still transmit audio and pictures. With Zigbee, we can only transmit packets of data, but that's all what we need. Short range communications. The range of Zigbee devices can go up to 75, sometimes 100 meters indoor. And for the outdoor, it can go up to 300 meters or even more. Network join time. It takes a Zigbee device around 30 milliseconds to join a network. Compare that to Wi-Fi device where it takes up to 3 seconds and for Bluetooth where it takes up to 10 seconds. Support small and large networks. Zigbee networks vary from several devices to thousands of devices. To be exact, Zigbee can support up to 65,000 devices in a single network. Well, that's in theory, but practically that won't be feasible. So 240 devices is practically the maximum. Compare this to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, where 32 devices is the maximum for Wi-Fi and seven devices is the maximum for Bluetooth. Low cost of products and cheap implementation. The reason for this is the simplicity of the technology. Zigbee standard is a lot less complex than Bluetooth standard or Wi-Fi standard. Also, the standard is an open source protocol, which makes it cheaper for manufacturer to build Zigbee technology because they don't have to pay any license fee and they don't have to pay any royalty. Security. Zigbee network uses AES algorithm for data encryption and data authentication. This is the standard that banks are using for their online operations. It is also commonplace in government agencies so it is one of the most robust and secure cryptographic algorithm out there. Regarding the frequency spectrum, there are three frequency bands currently assigned to Zigbee. The first frequency band is the 868 MHz and it includes only one channel. This band is allocated in Europe. The second band is the 915 MHz, which include 10 channels and can be found in US and Australia. The third band is the 2.4 GHz band and that is available across the world. Now, once a Zigbee network is established, only one channel will be selected for that network. This is important, only one channel. Okay, in this part, I will be talking about the different types of Zigbee devices and also the types of Zigbee networks that can be formed. We have three types of Zigbee devices, coordinator, routers, and end devices. 
Zigbee coordinator is the most capable device. It is the device that starts the network originally. So it is the root of the network. And there is exactly one coordinator device in each network. The coordinator performs many tasks. I will only cover the most important ones. Channel selection. So before the coordinator starts the network, it automatically performs a channel scan to select a good channel to be used for the network. By good channel, I mean a channel with the least interferences. It also assigns a unique identifier for the network. It allocates unique address to each device in the network. So anytime a device joins the network, the coordinator assigns an address to it. The coordinator also initiates and transfers messages inside the network. Routers. They act as intermediate nodes between the coordinator and the end devices. They are responsible for routing traffic between different nodes. They are responsible for routing traffic between different nodes. They also receive and store messages intended for their children, meaning end devices. At certain occasions, routers can allow other end devices to join the network. End device contains just enough information to talk to the parent node, which can be a coordinator or can be a router. They may sleep which makes end devices a suitable choice for battery operated devices. All traffic to an end device is first routed to its parent. As you see in this example, device A cannot transmit directly to device B. Data has to go through the router. This is because in case device B is asleep, the transmitted data will be stored in the router until device B is active again, then the router will send the data to device B. And by the way, the end device is responsible for requesting any pending messages from its parent when it wakes up. There are three types of network topologies that Zigbee supports. Star topology, which is the simplest and less expensive to implement, and that is the advantage of this topology. There are no routers in this architecture. Also, end device cannot communicate directly with another end device. Some of the drawbacks of this topology is that if the coordinator fails, then the whole network fails. Also, the range of the network is limited to the range of the coordinator itself. Now, we have mentioned an application of Zigbee in medical data collection. Well, that application can be implemented in a star topology, as you can see in this picture. In mesh networks, every node is connected with the neighboring node, except for the end devices that cannot be connected directly with each other. Now, if a device A wants to transmit data to device B, the message will hop from one device to another until it reaches its destination, as you see here. The main advantage of mesh network is that if one of the nodes fails, it does not incapacitate the entire system, since data can be rerouted using a different path, as you can see here. And this is called a self-healing process in mesh networks. This is an example of mesh network implemented for home automation. The home automation can always add more devices. If we have four, five or six devices, a star topology can still work for home automation. But as more devices are being added, then mesh topology would be the right one to go with. Tree topology. 
it's not very different from a mesh configuration except that the routers are not interconnected. However, there is another configuration called cluster tree network which let routers to be connected to expand the range of the network as you can see in this example. Okay, so we have mentioned earlier that the coordinator assigns only one channel to the network upon network establishment, which means that all devices will have to share this single channel to communicate it. So how can they share this medium? There are two methods that describes how Zigbee devices can access the channel, contention-based and contention-free. I'm not going to get too technical, I promise that, but it's worth describing these two methods. In the contention-free method, the coordinator dedicates a specific time duration called guaranteed time slot to each device. And obviously, the time slots cannot overlap with each other. Let's see how this GTS allocation is done. We are going to explain this through a, a star network as an example, one with five devices plus the coordinator. So to correctly assign the GTS, the coordinator needs to ensure that all the devices in the network are synchronized. And to achieve this, the coordinator transmits periodically a message called beacon. Once the devices receive the beacon, they will adjust or sync their clock to the coordinator clock. The reason this is accomplished first is because the beacon contains information on when each device can transmit data. So at this time, all devices know ahead of time when they can transmit. Each device will then wait for its turn and transmit its data at that assigned time slot. The coordinator transmits the beacon periodically, so the same operation repeats over time. The time slot allocation may differ from one beacon period to another. Not all devices need to transmit every beacon period. So, as you see here, device 2 and 4 are not transmitting in the second beacon period. And this can be pre-programmed in the coordinator by the developer. Because end devices know ahead of time when they can transmit, they will go to sleep and they will only wake up to either transmit data or to listen to the beacon. This is what enables low power consumption in Zigbee standard. For the contention based method, devices do not need to be synchronized. The carrier sense multiple access collision avoidance mechanism is used by all devices to access the channel. Let's explain that. In CSMA CA, anytime a device wants to transmit, it first goes into receive mode to detect if there is any signal in the channel, and it will only transmit the data if the channel is clear. However, if the channel is not clear, the device backs off for a random period of time and tries again. That's about it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have a comment, please leave it down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.